We're just going to talk for about 20 minutes. We're going to continue the topic of uh, bias, our biases. Um, I introduced it last month when I asked you to write down the first thing that came to your mind when we said teenage pregnancy. And it was just to write some things down and what do you think, right? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Aaron. Aaron. <laughs> well, teenage wasn't in there, was it? I followed that logic. Teenager or the pregnant part? I didn't win. Okay. So we have our set of life experiences, right? We have our parents' teachings, we have opinions, we've got things that we learned at school, and then all the traumas that happen to us in our life. And we see the wins that people have as well, you know, not just the negative around us. We also grow up in communities, and we have all those experiences and from other people. And then we have our own life experiences, and this gives us our paradigm in which we live in every day. And a paradigm is a standard and a perspective. It's a set of ideas, uh, a way of looking at something. And we have formed this. We've formed biases around all this, about our paradigm and, and where we come from and, and how we saw things. And biases are a partiality that prevents objective con consideration of an issue or a situation. A lot of times our biases, somebody comes biased, there's things that hit us all day long when you're out there. And for an example of a bias, let's just do um, something that just is quick. You're driving and somebody cuts you off. What is the first thing you think? Okay, that's your paradigm. That's your way of thinking. You know, if the first thing is the guy's an idiot, have you given any objective consideration to why the person cut you off? Have you given it any thought? No, the guy's just an idiot, right? So where does that come from and why do you think that way? Why would you think idiot instantly? And the reason that we do this is be, that we think about these things. You think, oh, that's just a little thing. The person's there, they're gone, what's the big deal? But we are training to be sons of God and you can't walk in dominion power and have these thoughts that instantly come to you that say idiot because you put dominion power behind that and you could zap a country or you could zap you could zap something right with that kind of power you have the faith to speak out something it can come to pass so God wants us to keep, take captive of every thought and how do you, and so that's why we want to look at this thing of biases. What do we automatically think? And do we give anything an objective consideration? So we'll go back to the teenager who is pregnant and those immediate biases that we thought about before with the immediate thoughts that came to us. And you guys made a list of them. Well, have, I'll always have stories for you of pregnant teenagers now because of where I work, so you're going to hear a lot of this, right? But the story of the week is there's a girl who looks really young, okay? But she looks young to me. To a 12-year-old, she's going to look old, right? But to me, she looks young. And she was out shopping in Walmart this last week, and there was a man in a wheelchair, and he was staring at her because she has a child. Well, she's 19, right? And so she's walking along with this child, and she definitely looks young for her age. She doesn't look old, older than her age. And this man is staring, and he starts scowling at her, and he goes, is that yours? And she's like, you mean the child? And he's like, yeah. Are you 14? And she goes, no, I'm 19, right? And uh, it, well, is that yours? And she's like, yeah, that's, that's my child. <laughs> well, I hope you take care of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, now let's take some objective consideration on this, okay? Let's say she was 14. 
I don't care how old she was, right? There's a lot wrong with the, the person and their actions and what they did it, but that was their biases. That's their paradigm in which they live. And whatever it was that happened in their life, right? So I said to this girl, I said, well, next time somebody says that to you and they ask you your age, just look them straight in the face and go, I'm 35. I use a great moisturizer. You know, stupid comments, stupid answer. Anyway, but, you know, what do you do, right, with that? And, I mean, already somebody who is, like, she's a teenage teenager trying to finish high school. She's come across a lot of these things. There's a lot of traumas built up in their age and all of the biases and everything behind it. Anyway, so she's sitting there and um, I said, oh man, like they get this all the time. This is just normal, right? But she's like, wow, she goes, my child looks like it's taken care of, right? I know of, through the grapevine, a couple who are in their late 20s that do not talk to their child. So if they were out with their child, would he have said the same thing to them? And does your age have anything to do with how well your child's been brought up? Now, if you think about it, how many decades ago or a generation ago, if you were 19, heck, you'd be married and having your first child, that'd be normal. You'd be out there with everybody, right? So just because people now have abortions, use lots of contraceptives. They don't, um, they don't have children until later in life because they have other things they want to do instead. So, does that matter? Why does age matter? Right? doesn't matter. But these are the things, and then stuff starts coming out of your mouth. It's not very good. So, um, just by thinking about that, just because now people wait, why is it wrong for somebody to have a child at 19, right? Plus, we do not know anything about that person. He knows nothing about that person. He knew nothing about her. He didn't learn about her. He didn't, you know, ask her how she was doing. I'm sure he didn't offer any money to help look after the child. If you're that concerned, sir, I could use 200 bucks. I'll tell her that next time. <laughs> if you Are you really concerned about how to take care of this child? Yeah, okay, you know what? I really could use 500 bucks right now. <laughs> how much is your concern? Let's see. Probably wouldn't even give her a quarter. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll tell them. Oh, I better be careful. They might get in trouble if I do this. <laughs> but... Uh, we do not know. We don't know if that person was attacked and decided to have the child. How do you know? You don't know, right? And also cultures, in a lot of cultures, they have children younger, right? So what is it that we are thinking that is totally wrong because we don't give it any consideration? We had a situation this week, and James knows because there's a situation and him and I had a chat. We were texting back and forth. And it was really, really interesting. Because as we were texting back and forth uh, this last week with uh, a, a situation that God's working out, it was really interesting how we think and what people think of someone. And I started to do some research and went on YouTube. And one of the biases that we have, that I researched on YouTube as well, is when you say somebody is homeless, right? What's the bias? What do people say? So I got on YouTube and I was watching some of these, you know, where they go out and they pick up a homeless person, right? And the one guy gets in um, and uh, he said, well, he said, they always yell at me, get a job. Well, we all know by this being the home for the homeless and stuff, and things, things that we know about traumas, right? It's not about getting a job. Most of the time, that's so far down the line, right? So have any of you guys heard of the Lamborghini owner who picked up the homeless man? His name was Alex. Okay, it was a really big deal at one time. 
So this guy, he went down and he picked up this homeless man and he says, hey, want to ride my Lamborghini? And the guy, the first question the guy asked is, do you want to rape me? So that just tells you something right there. But anyway, he gets in and he gets to go for a ride in a Lamborghini. And then the Lamborghini owner thinks, well, this is really cool. This guy has something. He's actually, he's, you know, he wants to do something. He wants to make his life better. And I'm thinking, well, there's a bias. What do you think? Everybody who's homeless doesn't want to make their life better? Mm-hmm. Like, where do you get that from? Right? What are you talking about? Right? And uh, so anyway, he got his hair cut. He got, got him clean clothes. He did all this stuff. He got him a job interview. Guess where he got him a job interview? The worst place you can imagine for someone who's already been ye- ye- yelled at on the street and everything and feels worthless. McDonald's? A call center. Oh. oh. Where you make calls. Where people like Charlene hang up on you. I try not to do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's like, whoa, right? And unfortunately, this man, who was a Lamborghini owner, was disappointed that this man could keep the job. And when you read the comments underneath, everybody's like, oh man, I would have quit that job too. What are you talking about? Like, that's the worst job. That's the hardest job. I mean, couldn't you have started with this or that? It, it doesn't really matter because he, the Lamborghini owner got a lot of kickback on social media because of what he did. But like the guy said, like Alex said, I got to ride a Lamborghini. Are you kidding? If I could have done that for a day and that was all you did for me you didn't even have to feed me bonus i'm happy right like he didn't care like i mean what was it to him he was like this is great i got a ride right how many of us get to do that you know so he got to do that right he was thankful for what happened right but i think the owner was a little disappointed when he saw alex on the street and alex's sign said Homelessness is where your heart is. Where is your heart? Where, where do you really think you are, right? And so, but Alex knows a lot of things about his life and what he could handle and what he could handle and a lot, a lot of things he might not know. But he, that man got tested by fire to try and keep a job like that. And so he thought he couldn't do it, you know. Um, And obviously the apartment he was put in and everything, he couldn't keep up with the payments on that because he was put in a situation where he couldn't do that, right? Um, I watched another one where a man was homeless and they put him in, but they put in all the supports to help him, right? All the training, all the supports, and day after day after day, right? Now, I never did, I couldn't find out where that went, right? But we know that there's biases that people think, right? People will say, well, my taxes go to pay for you. Oh, really? Well, guess what? They pay for all those politicians to spend money too. And your taxes also go on a lot of parties. And your taxes also go on a lot of stuff, right? So what? But people have these biases. And you know, it's not, it it was interesting because the sign saying it's where your heart is, but it's where the truth is. What is the truth of the matter? What is everything that goes behind that? And how are we thinking when these things come up? So uh, I talked about it last month. I'll talk about it every single month. (laughs) At least a comment, right? Because I'm starting to watch what I'm thinking immediately, and I really don't like a lot of things I think, right? I'm catching myself on these thoughts and thinking, well, hang on a sec, where's that based in any kind of truth, right? Needs to be in the truth of the Word of God. So, very interesting. Um, Another one I was thinking of is the guy with the Lamborghini, right? He's all upset that this guy didn't keep going with this job and all that kind of stuff, but he shouldn't be. He just doesn't understand that it's very easy to give somebody a haircut. It's very easy to put on some clothes. But what God is doing in our life is he changes us from the inside out. He gives us an identity in Yeshua. So no matter what situation you are in, 
you're still you. You're still a son of God. You're chosen. You have a purpose. You have a future. That's what matters, right? That's where we need to be. And he just didn't know that. That Lamborghini owner doesn't know what a lot of people who work in, let's say, the inner city with the traumas and the background. He just doesn't know. And he shouldn't be disappointed because what he did was pretty neat. He went out and he did something. He didn't sit at home and watch the next football game and eat Cheetos. He actually got out there and he, he at least did something. And he made the guy's day. He made a lot of days for that guy, right? And so he was out there and doing something. And so this is what, why we need our identity and who we are, because it doesn't matter what situation we're in or what people say to us. Like whether you're the 19-year-old or we have 15-year-olds who are pregnant, or uh, it doesn't matter what situation we're in. Who are we and what is on the inside of us? Who is the one who makes it different? I mean, when Joseph was in prison, Right? Did that make him a criminal? No, he wasn't a criminal. He got put in jail. And so, let's say he did. Let's say he did something wrong and he was in jail. Doesn't matter. God would forgive him and he had a plan of redemption. We would have had a plan of redemption to get him out. Right? So, it is about our future that we have. A future and a hope of where we're going. And what are we thinking about with other people and other things? I was thinking also, here you got the Lamborghini owner, well let's put it on him. You see him driving this very expensive rare car, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Oh, his daddy must be rich, what did he give him, right? <laughs> but I don't know. You've thought that, yeah. Mommy and daddy looking after him. But is that true? Maybe, no. maybe not, depending on the situation. Exactly, a lot of times it isn't. A lo you know, it might be the, I don't he know. He was homeless at one time and they, all of a sudden he got inspired to do something and now he yeah. has a Lamborghini. Exactly, and there's those, those people too, yeah. right? Absolutely. Or it could be some young guy who's 25 that put every single penny in because that's what he wanted to buy and that's what he bought. So, who cares? I was over at Scott's and he bought an extremely expensive toolbox. Like he'd buy a nice car. It's very expensive. It has chrome wheels. And uh, <laughs> it does all kinds of fancy things. Like, yeah, your drill is always plugged in. And it does the quarter mile in seven seconds. Absolutely, it would. It would. If we put it on a hill and pushed it, it would. Absolutely, it's very shiny very large. It's the size probably of Jasmine's little car. So, but you know what he said? People go, well, why do you have that? And they said, well, why not? You're the one that went to work every day. You're the one that has to make decisions. You're the one that keeps your lights on in your house. You're the one that has, who cares? Right? And you're 27 years old. Believe me, it's not going anywhere because it's really heavy to move. <laughs> but, but and he has a mechanic, like he is a journeyman mechanic, right, as of July. So he uses his stuff, he knows how to use it. He didn't just buy it and he doesn't know how to use it. And I, I said, well, you're 27, you're going to use it your whole life. They're not going to wear out. Well, unless you really refund something, <laughs> you know. But who cares? Like, it doesn't matter. That's what you did. Now, for me, I'd be like, what well, J.D. and I were talking about this. So we want to see some, you know, snap-on in the kitchen. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> we want good stuff in the kitchen. But, you know what, that's not the, maybe Michelle's priority, and who cares? That's not for me to decide, or my bias, right? And so it doesn't really matter. That's where that person's at, right? But we have these biases, like Hugh and I, where somebody drives by and, ooh, mommy and daddy must have given them money. And that's not, a, it's not a right thought. That's showing Unless us where... Unless you're right. <laughs> Unless you're right. Right. But the attitude behind our thought is, my daddy in heaven isn't good enough for me. He's not going to give me anything. Right? That's really the attitude. 
because we're talking about us and how we're going to change and how our thoughts need to change, not about somebody else and where they are in life or where they're not in life, right? It's, it really is about us when we're talking about other people. It's about our pains, our think worthless, the worthlessness that we carry, you know, the unforgivenesses we carry, the traumas that we carry, that we can just lay down. And the more we lay them down, the more we don't care what somebody has or doesn't have. You know, we don't care how old they are. Age should not be a factor in anything. Right? We shouldn't, we shouldn't do that whatsoever. You know? Uh, Michelle's dad went over to fix the tire and Scott said, oh, just go to the toolbox, take what you want. Michelle said, it took a really long time for him to go in there and find a tool. She goes, I think he went through every single drawer. <laughs> and then he said to Scott, he goes, what the heck do you need all this stuff? <laughs> but I don't think he minds that it's there. Because he can come and use it, right? You see, your, your attitude changes when you get to use it, right? Shouldn't be that way. We should be able to be okay with those things. So what biases do we carry about God? Right? So this is my next question for next month. Okay? So I want you to start thinking about that. I'm going to make a Google Doc. Hey, did everybody get on that Google Doc? Do you know how to do that, to share the document? No, you guys are like, no. Aaron got on. Aaron showed me how to get on. Yeah, Robert got on. Did you get on, Tim? No? Okay, well, if you if you go on Google, doc, Google um, Docs, you can have an account, and you sign in, and we can share a document. So we literally all could be typing on the same document at the same time, and you can see each other typing. But you can get in each other's way. You can have like a little battle of the words if you want. But <laughs> I feel a new game coming on. Yeah, exactly. Like Aaron's changing the, the lettering and I'm like, I don't like that. So I'm changing it back. <laughs> but the nice thing about it is that's how we shared the scriptures for the fast. And so then we all can add to the list, right, of scriptures. And then it's our list and we can all share it. And then you can look it up anytime you want. Can you print it off? Oh, wait, well, it's like it's your a, document. It's just like it's yours, it's mine, it's everybody's, okay. and you just print it off. And then we can have a tournament after that. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you have to enter? Like, you basically to sign user? into Google, okay. you go to Google Drive, and there it is. Yep, and it's right there. What info do they need to know? Nothing. Yeah, no, the, the, well, you the, have to the user ID and the password yeah. we gave you. Yeah, the user okay. ID and password I gave you. So <laughs> I'm going to start a document. Oh, one more thing. Oh, like, sorry, go ahead. question one person. Once you're finished on working with the document, do sign out because otherwise, um, all your search history, all your internet uh, surfing history is logged on there. It's there for everybody to see. So I've already gone through and, and wiped out the uh, history a number of times. So when you're finished oh, with the document, you. sign out. Otherwise, everything's logged there. Okay, thank you. <laughs> sign out. Okay. So I'm going to start a new document on the biases that we carry about God. Okay. Can you think of any off the top of your head? I know Gerald can think of a few. <laughs> He's probably already th thought of a list. But We're talking about general biases, not necessarily our biases. Not your biases. No, what biases do... Well, your our biases too. If we want to be that transparent, we can put our own biases on there, right? I mean, one bias is that God isn't going, can't provide for us or won't provi provide for us now. And that God, the Father, is cruel. He was the Old Testament God who was a meanie, meanie, meanie. And then Jesus came, sweet Jesus. Uh, and and he lets a lot of things go and he changed a lot of the laws of him. So mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a dichotomy, there's a schizophrenia in the God family because the Father and the Jesus aren't, aren't one in this paradigm. In, this in that paradigm, yeah. in that thought, yeah. Yeah. So I invite you to do that because I want us to really think about it because... How many things do we automatically think of that comes up in our mind about God that has not had objective consideration? In other words, the scripture isn't taken. You haven't found the Hebrew words to go in there to really know the meaning of the word or the understanding of it, right? Well, you take the, uh, the season that's about to come Christmas. Right. And... Jesus being born in December, not on trumpets. Mm -hmm. That is a bias. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's something there, right? Well, and it. What are those things that we do as well um, about God, where we, where people say, 
um, well, only those who go to my church are saved. So when somebody comes up and says they're in another church, you automatically, the first thing that comes to your mind is, oh, this is a heathen. Mm -hmm. There would be one, right? Or a cult. What are you thinking about? Mm -hmm. You don't know that person, necessarily. And even if you know a little bit of information, why do you think that you know everything? Right? Well, Charlene, just about Pastor Robert's book that I was speaking about earlier, about mm -hmm. healing. And that's the interesting, I'm finding... He speaks out, he speaks to us about a certain concern or and stuff, but he gives God's word for confirmation of what he's speaking of, okay? Right, yeah, okay. and then we have to take that word, or, yes. and we have to make sure that it's true, because yeah. that's our job, Yes. and then it has to be written on our heart, right? That's a process. That's a process that takes time. Yeah. Pastor Robert does speak about identity. <laughs> yeah. What it, yeah. In the identity. healing book. We're learning yeah. a yeah, lot more healing. about identity. But like, uh, well, when Aaron had to correct something from Kim Clement's group, they said God took him. And Aaron properly explained, no, only Satan takes his own. But God doesn't God doesn't take his people away like that. He doesn't, he doesn't kill them. He doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. And he gave hope that there are other apostles and prophets that are rising up at the end. But he had to correct that because it's a very common misconception. Mm -hmm. God took him. Oh, you're a sweet little angel now in heaven. Because you were four years old, you passed away. God has another angel now in heaven. You know, kind of thing like that. God took him. He took him. God doesn't steal and God doesn't kill. Well, that, yeah, that, that, that concept is really like... Why aren't you all born and then you all die and all go to heaven then? If it's all so good and yes. it, he does that, like, it just seems weird. But anyway. So, but what do we think of other people? And what are those things, those negative things that are coming into our head that does not, that blocks us to be able to walk in love with other people? Because those thoughts that come into our head block the love from flowing. It can put us into fear so that we can't hear from the Holy Spirit. Right? I mean, how many times you, do you see somebody, and because they have a certain color of hair, maybe they're a certain height, it could be somebody that you were scared of, they could be blonde and blue-eyed, or they could be dark hair and dark eyes, or whatever it is, but it brings instant fear, because you think they're, you know, a terrorist, or whatever it is, and you're not able to hear from the Holy Spirit, because you have these automatic thoughts that you go to, and you allow them to stay there and then you can't be in peace you can't walk in love to people or wisdom or discernment or anything because they come up so fast and I've noticed them they come up so fast in your head and we want to replace that with the love of God with the truth with listening to the Holy Spirit so we can walk in wisdom and discernment in every situation and in the truth